Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Medieval Reader. So today in the United States is Columbus Day. As you are probably well aware, Columbus was a terrible man who enslaved and killed many, many indigenous people in the quote-unquote New World. Um, so today I didn't want to talk about Christopher Columbus directly, but instead I wanted to talk about one of his apologists, um, someone who defended the Spanish conquest of the New World. And that is Juan Ginés de Sepúlveda, who lived in the late 15th and died in the first half of the 16th century. Sepúlveda wore a lot of hats. He was a Spanish humanist, a poet, a theologian, and also an apologist for colonial slavery. One of his most famous works is called Democrates Alter de Justis Belli Causis Apud Indos, which is translated as A Second Democritus on the Just Causes of War with Indians, which was published in 1550. And so today I want to talk about this work, not, of course, to defend him or to justify his arguments or to say that his arguments were logical because, as I will show, they are not. But because I think it's important that we read these very unpleasant historical documents to enter into the minds of these defenders of violence um, so that we can spot it in others and that we do not repeat history. So I think that today, while it is highly unpleasant to do so, it is important to revisit our history and read the writings of these apologists of slavery. So what I'm going to talk about is mostly Sepulveda's work. This dialogue is actually a sequel to another dialogue he wrote with Democritus voicing his own personal views on slavery. Um, so Democritus reappears in this dialogue and once again his interlocutor is Leopold who is a German Lutheran um, this is what Sepulveda says. He says, German Leopold, who is contaminated by Lutheran errors. Um, but as you will see, the German Leopold uh, definitely has views that we would consider pretty enlightened, especially in comparison to Sepulveda's. So here is how it begins. This is what Leopold says. I shall tell you a thousand and one times, Democrates, that there is no argument strong enough to convince me that war is lawful, much less among Christians. And then he goes on to say that Christian charity is completely opposed to the Spanish conquest of the New World, that enslaving people, that killing people, that using physical violence against others is not Christian. To which Sepulveda responds that there are two laws. There is natural law and then there is Christian law. And while Christian law is certainly appropriate and something we should follow, it isn't necessarily true for all cases. It isn't universally binding in the way that natural law is. Um, Sepulveda prefers Aristotle, whom he claims is unanimously viewed by intelligent people, basically people like, like himself, the humanists, um, and the scholastics before him, for being a master of natural law, for knowing natural law. Um, and Aristotle did defend the use of violence. Um, so Aristotle is the major figure that Sepulveda cites, but he does also cite the Bible. Um, in this document, it's particularly Proverbs, where it says that the fool shall be led by the wise man. And as you will see, Sepulveda believed that the indigenous people were natural fools and therefore needed to be subjugated, that that was their natural state. And then Leopold says, you know, but how is this a just war? This is totally unjust. And so Democritus responds by giving three conditions for a just war. The first condition is that the reasons for the war must be just, repelling force. So if someone were to attack you, then a just war would be uh, self-defense. The second cause of a just war is retrieving possessions that have been taken by someone. So if someone stole your property, then it would be just to fight a war to get that property back. And the third one is to punish evildoers who are not being punished in their own city. So in other words, if in a foreign land there are evildoers, it is our responsibility, no matter where we come from, to punish the evildoer. And Sepulveda believes that the indigenous people, when they do not embrace Spanish rule, when they resist Spanish rule, 
are committing a crime against nature because they are naturally creatures who are to be subjugated. He says that they are subhuman, that they lack intelligence, um, that they are barely any better than animals. And he quite literally says that. Even though jurists claim that all people are created equal, Sepulveda says that philosophers distinguish between those who are naturally free and those who are natural slaves. Philosophers see slavery as inferior intelligence along with inhuman and barbarous customs. He then goes on to describe the barbarous and inhuman customs in the New World, including cannibalism, which was something the humanists, well, really everyone in the Middle Ages and everybody in the 15th and 16th centuries were citing. They were saying that there are cannibals in the New World. They are presented as people who are constantly fighting amongst each other, which is ironic because Sepulveda died in the middle of the French wars of religion which were between religions, between nation states. It was disgustingly violent. And somehow Sepulveda thinks that the Spanish are still the greatest of people. He goes into detail explaining how cultured the Spanish are, how the greatest writers came from Spain, how in comparison to the Spanish, like it's very clear that the um, new world is populated by these subhuman animals. And so here's what Leopold says in response to Democritus's definition of just war. According to your opinion, Democrates, in order for a war to be considered just, a worthy aim and upright conduct are required. But this war against the barbarians, as I understand it, is not even undertaken with good intentions, since those who have started it have no other aim than that of acquiring, by right or wrong, the largest possible amount of gold and silver. And since the Spanish do not wage this war justly or rationally, but with great cruelty and injury to the barbarians, and in the manner of a theft, there is no doubt that the Spanish are obliged to restore to the barbarians the things which they have seized, no less than most highwaymen, what they have robbed from travelers. So Leopold saying, well, the Spanish are just stealing their land. They're stealing everything. How is this even just? Like this does not fit the definition that you have just given of just war. And Democritus' response is quite familiar. Well, not all Spanish. Yeah, I mean, it's true that there are Spanish who are doing this, but really it's exaggerated. And really the issue though, is that the indigenous people, they are subhuman, they are like animals. Yeah, it's true that in Mexico, there's this great civilization, there is a king, there are buildings, there's some very modern um, in, Spanish standards, um, technologies, but still, I mean, don't animals do that too? He says, well, the birds build nests. I mean, how is this modern? Um, so Sepulveda has no interest in trying to question his assumptions um, because their manner of rule is different than the Europeans. It's necessarily wrong. He says, you know, these people just slavishly obey the king and he says, even though we are forcing rule upon these people, it's actually a more benevolent slavery than they are receiving from their king. Because at least the Christians are really charitable and loving, as can be seen in the policies that they are enacting in the New World. He calls them homunculi, which means half men. Um, the homunculi, by the way, there was this belief that um, sperm was contained a tiny human male, which would then develop into a full human. Like that was part of their view of reproduction. So he's, that's basically what he's calling these people. Here's what he says. These are half men in whom you will find barely the vestiges of humanity, who not only do not possess any learning at all, but are not even literate or in possession of any monument to their history, except for some obscure and vague reminiscences of several things put down in various paintings, nor do they have written laws, but barbarian institutions and customs. And then of course he repeats that they eat human flesh. So no, they are just, they're not Spanish. They are barbarians. They are subhuman. They live like animals. Despite all of the evidence to the contrary, they are not civilized. They're not able to demonstrate any kind of wisdom, any kind of culture. They 
are naturally inferior and therefore it is just that they be enslaved because that is who they are. And when they resist, then we must use weapons. What is interesting is that Sepulveda says that yes, pagans, if they were cultured pagans, they could not be forced into slavery. Um, but these uh, indigenous people, they are more than pagans. They're pagans, but they also have all these unlawful customs that they practice and they are just naturally inferior. Um, so it's really because of that that we're enslaving them. Although it's good that we're gonna spread Christianity. Um, and yes, Augustine said we shouldn't use force to spread Christianity, but we're using force to put them in their place. And then we're using Christianity to enlighten them, which of course is a very good thing, as he says. He calls the slavery a servitude a little less harsh um, because the Christians are cultivators of human virtues and the true faith, unlike their king, whom they slavishly obey. Um, which, again, is quite ironic because they're being asked to slavishly obey the Spanish conquerors. So yeah, this is really, really unpleasant. He did have an opponent. Uh, Sepulveda's opponent was Bartolomeo de las Casas, who was opposed to the forced enslavement, um, well, the enslavement of the indigenous people, saying that conversion should be fully um, free, that he did support missionary activity in the New World, but he did not believe in coercion. Um, obviously, Sepulveda won the day, and it is this ideology that um, was used to justify uh, the conquest of new lands, um, or newly discovered lands. And it's very ugly history, um, but I think it's important that we read these documents, as I said, um, because it really just weighs on you when you read it and you see the kind of quote-unquote logic that is used. One of the most important figures, like I said, that Sepulveda cited was Aristotle. And here's the passage that he cited from Aristotle. It comes from book one of the politics. Those whose condition is such that their function is the use of their bodies and nothing better can be expected of them, those, I say, are slaves of nature. It is better for them to be ruled thus. Yeah, so I thought that this would be the most appropriate video um, for this Columbus Day, which I certainly approve of the um, move to change it to Indigenous Day um, or Indigenous Peoples Day. I, I, I've seen different things. Um, it's really awful that we still have a holiday um, dedicated to a violent and evil person. But uh, hopefully we can inform ourselves and nip hatred in the bud as soon as we see it. Um, reading this stuff really makes me more aware of the rhetoric that people use in defense of oppression. Um, I've heard this rhetoric before in a number of different contexts and it's really disturbing because it can quickly lead to violence. So let me know if you've ever heard of Sepulveda, if you've ever read anything um, by or about the Spanish conquest um, or any of the other conquests. Um, and I will talk to you later. Bye now.